Hey, what is up, everybody? GM, I am Hunter Rell, and this is the Morning Mint. Uh, so happy to see everybody here this morning. We're going to talk a little bit about the market, uh, what's happening with ETH and Bitcoin, uh, and why that's you know why that is. Uh, a little bit about Board Ape Yacht Club and the punks, and what we're seeing happen here uh, with potential flipping that almost happened, uh, where we saw Board Ape Yacht Club uh, hanging around the 50s. Um, and punks as low as uh, in the mid 60s, so very close to to touching finally. Um, and we're also going to talk about a little bit of a drama that happened uh, around funks uh, last e- you know last night, uh, and you know just what happened there. Um, you know, quickly touching on that funk stuff, we saw some uh, prominent members in that community uh, making some accusations um, towards Board API Club. Um, and, you know, I, without going into details, um, you know, I, I do think that these sorts of accusations and, uh, you know, kind of stirring the pot and drama, those are things that when I see people doing that, it's it, I just don't agree with. Um, and, you know, I, I really just think the drama and, uh, you know, the engagement farming stuff is, is not a uh, sustainable or a uh, value adding uh, activity for the community. So um, not a fan of it, uh, you know, but I also do want to say that individuals within communities cannot represent that entire community. Um, I do think it is how the rest of the community reacts to that. Um, and, and I do think that we saw a lot of the funk say, hey, we don't approve of this. So, um you know, I, I take it for what it's worth. Um, I'm going to continue to look and see uh, how the situation plays out. Um, but moving on from that, uh, over the last few days, we've seen a lot of volatility. Um, and it's, it's for a few main reasons that I, I kind of want to address. Um, one is the uh, Omicron uh, variant of the COVID. Um, uh, you know, I, what we're seeing right here is a lot of people uh, starting to worry more about what's happening. And I'm not saying any of these is an individual single reason for seeing the, the volatility. Um, but I do think there are a lot of different factors at play here. Um, so you have like COVID, uh, we have the Fed uh, adjusting uh, interest rates, um, we have a huge amount of leverage uh, being deployed into the uh, crypto market. And uh, what happens with all of this, and in addition with tech stocks, there's a little uncertainty, not only because of that interest, but also because of the China tech stock um, issues that we're seeing happen right now. There's just a lot of volatility. Um, so now we have another COVID variant. Um, the Fed is talking now about uh, increasing interest rates. Um, and, and part of this also being because we're seeing the unemployment rate really start to recover to to pre uh, COVID numbers, which means you know because of this, uh, the interest rate potentially being uh, at a point where the Fed feels like raising it uh, is a comfortable number. Now I know this is a lot of like political, um, a lot of you know uh, things that probably don't interest you as an NFT um, and, and crypto person. But it's interesting uh, and important to understand that there are global dynamics at play right now uh, that are going to impact the market. Um, so, you know, between those three different different things, we are going to see some volatility um, as this does impact uh, a lot of the large players that are likely um, to be, you know, buying uh, ETH and Bitcoin, um, and it will provide some volatility. So do understand those, keep an eye on them. Uh, and I would say don't expect for this to end because um, we do have a lot of other things, including like tax harvesting, uh, putting some pressure on the market uh, for people to sell off losses, um, as well as lock in uh, positions for the next year. Um, but moving on from that, uh, we'll look at some of what the market's doing today. Uh, and some important things. Probably one of the most interesting things uh, that's going to be happening today is uh, the wolf game, uh, the risky game uh, to be specific. Um, What we're seeing right now is that about half of the sheep have entered to play this uh, risky game, which puts your wool pouch uh, up at risk. Um, We've seen some very, very good detailed information on this. Uh, from Twitter user uh, Brid Astanto. Uh, you know, this is this is the sort of things that you need to do uh, at this sort of level is actually look at the numbers because there are a lot of statistical, uh, you know, 
things happening here for like expected value return, um, how many people are playing, and what is the best option. Um, you know, the positive EV uh, play here is to play the game uh, for pretty much from what I can understand every scenario. Um, but where it does get tricky is when your uh, sheep count is very low, like I would say between like one to five, you're at a very low statistical number. Um, and, you know, I, I do think there uh, there is a little bit of uncertainty Will if you will get that 50% um, steal rate. Uh, it could be, you know, it could end up being 25%. It could be 75%. We don't know. Um, but it is a sample size that's very small. So uh, I would say anything under five, it, it is actually questionable if playing the risky game is worth it. Um, anything above five, I think you start to get into a situation where, okay, uh, there is a little bit less risk. You can't expect to have 50% of it stolen. Um, and it isn't positive expected value uh, for playing the risky game. Uh, current wolf game uh, numbers, we have a floor for the sheep of 0.345. This is down dramatically over uh, 90% from where we saw the floor a few weeks ago before the contract uh, migration. Um, you know, we had the floors at 4 ETH and we had uh, wolves trading uh, at, a, at a floor of like 7 and 8 ETH. Um, I think even at one point, uh, like uh, alpha 6s were worth like 10 to 13 ETH. Uh, very interesting things, but the entire game is down. Uh, but I will say this. I've noticed that when you have devs that are quick to move, uh, that there is a lot of, you know, they're kind of like setting what the expectations are for the rest of this sort of like uh, play to earn and kind of like risk on chain with gamification uh, of these decisions. I have some respect for that. So I haven't sold anything that I've originally minted. I'm excited to see what happens here in the future. Um, but this is, a, I think, a longer-term play. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, right now, uh, as of this morning, I think wool is way down. Um, still from, like, where we saw highs up at almost 30 cents. Um, we did have a low of, like, 3 cents. This is up now, uh, you know, almost 100% from, from those really really real lows, uh, almost down to, you know, tw you know, almost two cents there. Um, so keep an eye on this. Uh, all of these things are going to be changing pretty rapidly. I expect a lot of volatility around that project, but definitely keep your eye on that. Um, the overall market, uh, this morning looking at NFTs, uh, currently CryptoPunks is still number one, uh, with Board API Club. Um, there has been some changing volume wise here, depending on news and updates. I do expect these two to stay neck and neck, uh, you know, for the near future. I don't see anything coming from either of them that would make me say, uh, to lean one way or another. We have seen a lot of, uh, you know, uncertainty and fear around crypto punks, uh, with their IP licensing and some prominent punks, uh, actually selling theirs. Um, because they just don't believe in the cause and the lack of communication from Larva Labs. Um, I think I think that's a valid point, but I also do think that CryptoPunks have established their place um, in in you know history for NFTs, so uh, they'll always be valuable. I do know there is a bet uh, amongst two uh, CryptoPunks holders uh, where that the floor for CryptoPunks at some point next year will be. Um, I believe below a quarter million dollars. We did see it touch very close uh, over the last few days, getting down to like I think a two hundred and eighty thousand dollar floor. Um, that's recently recently rebounded um, back uh, up to like a seventy three seventy four e floor. We'll look at that in a second. Um, while Board Ape Yacht Club is held steady. Uh, the rest of the market right now, we're seeing lots of green. Um, there's some volume flowing back in. I know there was a lot of fear, um, especially during last week's uh, whole dip in the market. Uh, and that always causes a little bit of, bit of volatility within the NFT market when we see these large ETH movements. Um, Gazers, a project we're going to talk about in a second here. Really interesting art blocks, Curia drop. Um, Doodles, staying strong. I really like the project. Another interesting uh, art project, Wavelengths, uh, that we've seen kind of 
be stealthy. Uh, it's got that Fidenza vibe, um, something that I've seen a lot of people buying. I know Koopa Troopa uh, bought a ton of these. He's been offloading some. Uh, questionably, are we too late or too early here? Punk's comic, uh, kind of staying tready after st- staying steady after their Adidas deal, as well as staking being enabled. Um, I am expecting some sort of liquidity squeeze, not only for the comics, um, but also for the meta heroes. Um, MF is doing quite well, sticking around a 0.18 E floor. Um, and Christie's as well, doing a ton of volume on their first auction with OpenSea. Uh, great to see that. We'll dive into a few of these, but the general market right now um, is pretty pretty solid. I don't see uh, you know a huge sell-off for a lot of the core blue chips. Um, there are, I think, a lot of projects that are kind of on this like we're waiting for the news we're waiting to see what happens cool cats is definitely one of those board api club definitely has some stuff up its sleeves punks comic and pixel vault certainly have things to come doodles i am also expecting big things from so i i think right now we're definitely at this kind of like um you know a solid market status not too worried about a lot of things um and i think we'll mostly see volatility within the the coin market so bitcoin and ethereum um and we'll see ethereum uh we'll, we'll see nfts kind of play into that but i don't expect like huge sell-offs i don't expect uh crashes for these blue chips um i do expect though that more people will be getting into nfts we'll see as we go into 2022 a lot of these financial institutions as well as uh your retail investors start to seriously consider um, NFTs as an investment. Uh, Gazers by Matt Cain was a super, super interesting uh, drop that happened with Artbox. Um, we saw this go all the way down to the uh, you know, 0.25 uh, Dutch auction number, sell out for 0.25, and then immediately uh, we saw this project rip all the way up to a, a floor for ETH. Um, we're currently trending around 3.75. Uh, the activity has been pretty solid on this uh, over the last couple of hours here with people picking things up between 4 and 8 ETH. Um, you know, this is, it's interesting to see an art blocks project uh, that, you know, we haven't seen a lot of them like pop off. Um, this one certainly has, I think, kind of like the lore to it being uh, something that's, uh, kind of a nod towards the lunar phases and actual integration into the current lunar phases. Um, definitely seems like it has uh, connected with a lot of the community. I mean, a lot of people are buying in. Uh, so hopefully this is kind of a signal that art blocks uh, projects are going to start making their turnaround. As I know, a lot of them are down from their all time highs. We've seen this with Ringer's Fidenza um, and, you know, many others. So, uh, definitely excited to see what happens there, uh, keeping an eye on what happens. Um, MFers from Sartoshi, uh, a project that's done in a ton of activity. We've seen Gary Vee giving them away. I've seen pretty much every prominent person, uh, picking these up, um, still doing well. We've seen it hold steady over the last few days. Um, people are still picking them up. Uh, and I'm very excited to know that, uh, we have these people within our community that are being rewarded um, for their participation, and we know that Sartoshi is a great, uh, great artist and has provided many memes um, to to the community. And uh, really excited to see what's going on there. Um, for those who don't know, Christie's and OpenSea had their first auction together, um, and this auction went off amazing. Um, we had pieces from like Fuck Render. Uh, Dot Pigeon, Alpha Century Kid, um, Friends of Benefits, Mad Dog, Blau, um, you know, a, a lot of others as well. Uh, we even, I think, had a Tom Sachs rocket um, that was auctioned off. So, uh, you know, notably here, the highest sale that they had was for, I believe, a Cyber Kong. Yes, yeah, Cyber Kong 201 selling for 185 ETH. Um, which was, you know, they're a really big standout sale for them. Um, but also seeing that we had uh, other things go for, for amazing prices. Um, really great to see an auction like this and a collaboration between Chrissy's and OpenSea kind of signaling that we're making 
uh, a step towards the future. Um, so congrats to all the artists. I know Alpha Century Kid had an amazing piece uh, that was kind of like an anti-rug. So definitely go check that out um, with the floating piano. Uh, Crypto Toads by Gremplin uh, currently you know, it's been hovering steady, uh, over the last, um, couple weeks here. Haven't seen too much. The last 30 days, uh, we did see a little bit of a spike up to like six ETH. Um, but I do think we've kind of like established that there is a floor, um, around like the three to four ETH area. Um, we'll see what happens. These seem to have established themselves as part of, uh, you know, just kind of the blue chip, uh, you know, scene and i don't disagree with that it will be super interesting to see what they come out with next uh we know that this is a project that will have a lot of iterations to come um just looking at the one of one floor uh still very high uh you know 99 there were you know we'll see we'll see what happens with the one of ones but um you know it's super interesting to see the dynamics of this project um and i will probably be picking another one up at some point here it's a really really great project by Grumplin. Um, another project that's been interesting, you know, like I said, with the, uh, the toads is that we've seen a floor be established there. Um, with me bits, I think it's kind of the same thing where we've seen this floor, uh, sort of be established where we're just not going to go under, um, three, because if it does, we start to see people buying in. Um, so over the last 30 days, real quick, you can see that, uh, the average price is stuck around five ETH. Um, the floor is pretty much stuck around, you know, 2.9 to 3.5. Um, and we're just seeing, I think more and more people pick this up. Um, what's super interesting and we'll pick the, pull this up is to see what the, uh, number of holders is. And I encourage everybody goes and does this. Um, we are currently seeing about 5,300 holders, uh, for me, so I'm curious how this has changed over time. If we're seeing more people just adding to bags, or if this is a project, um, that over time people are looking at Larva labs as this, uh, you know, established, uh, player in the space and saying, this is the cheapest entry into Larva labs, uh, to own fully outright my own asset. So I'm buying in, uh, those are some of the dynamics that I would encourage people to check out. Cool cats. Like I said, uh, you know, they're the website that they've launched and the interactions that they've launched online really enjoy that. Um, I'm excited for breeding. I'm excited for the currency. I think when so we start to see a lot of this roll out, plus uh, expected collaborations with traditional retail, um, you know, lifestyle companies that that I'm expecting to roll out. I do think this project starts to look more and more like uh, what Board Ape Yacht Club looks like. Um, so I'm really excited. I think it's highly undervalued for for what it can, can become. Uh, so I'm holding on to mine. Very excited to see. Uh, what the future holds here activity wise um, again another project that we've seen kind of hold steady uh, we have seen a little bit of a pump up um, when uh, you know I think we had a large sale plus a little bit um, of activity into uh, you know about a month ago um, but since then it's been pretty steady along and a lot of the charts currently look like this where um, you know, back in November, we saw a little bit of increase in, uh, purchasing and it's just been quiet since. Um, so I'm expecting a lot of the rollouts here to happen, uh, over the next, you know, month or two for, well, not rollouts, but announcements that trigger, uh, the increased, uh, buying volume. Same thing here with VFriends, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk has been, you know, kind of just saying, buy what you want. Um, and, you know, hinting that VCon is going to be something that people don't understand the, you know, the, the largeness of, um, I have high expectations for that. I'll be making my hotel accommodation soon. Um, because I learned from Miami, do not wait until the last minute to buy hotels, uh, for a large event. It's going to hurt. Um, so the floor here is still sitting about 8.5. Um, we haven't seen too many huge sales. We saw goat. Uh, currently sell for 12.84, um, something that I would consider picking up. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've won a one for a while and uh, yeah, it's it's one of those things where I think people have been rewarded for, for the purchase. Um, and yeah, that, that gift code's got to be an outlier here, um, just looking through. But we have seen a lot of people offloading uh, their gift goats from the first gift. Um, it does look like uh, that the last couple days here that's been a prominent seller 
Um, we'll pay attention over the next few weeks to see what happens um, going forward. Floor price for the Meta Heroes um, currently sitting at about four. You know, the activity here has been uh, increasing. I would say um, as staking has uh, become uh, opened up, um, and we're seeing more people start to claim uh, their mint passes. So for those who aren't aware, mint pass is just a pass that says you can claim it for a meta hero. You go redeem it. It burns the mint pass. You get a meta hero in return. Um, so there's kind of this dynamic of market supply for, uh, hey, I want to take the lotto ticket and redeem it. Um, and then people go in and buying these meta heroes uh, to go either stake or just own. Um, so there's going to be an interesting dynamic that we see unfold here where I think people are going to, um, you know, start to try to take these meta hero identities, stake them. They'll realize that they're earning, you know, money for it. Um, and then we'll start to see this whole uh, floor price change. Um, but I do think meta hero, Pixel Vault, Punk's comic are all for like their effort uh, deployed um, and for the quality of work deployed, highly undervalued. Um, I, this is probably one of, you know, and disclosure here, I do own a lot of what I've been talking about. Um, I do think that this is one of those projects where, uh, the, the next steps for what they're building because of the, you know, the ambition about them, if they do find success, um, these are highly, highly expected to, uh, you know, have some change in floor price. Um, so, I am I am very bullish on this. I'm very excited for what they're doing. Um, I do think if they can attack the play to earn game, uh, you know, in area quite well, that it will become a he heavily sought after project. Um, I will make a note about Fluff World. Fluff World was a great project that I got to go see in Miami live. Um, they had a a, a virtual performer. Um, I, I think it was called like Angel One. I, don't quote me on that. Um, but it was an animated uh, fluff world, uh, and the fluff essentially performed. I think it was like some rap. Um, the quality of it was amazing. It was only it was very short. It was like thirty seconds to a minute long. Um, but I think it does kind of set the tone for what these avatars can become. Um, in this case, that fluff became a performer. Um, what happens, you know, if these start being used inside our virtual world and they have uh, characters and those different characters have different things? Um, I can say I became a believer in the project. Um, I actually ended up purchasing one uh, while I was there um, that has recently been gifted off. Um, but I'll be purchasing one hopefully in the near future here because I do see the quality of work, what the team's doing. Um, and I do encourage everybody look at them. I would say my original turnoff to this was I didn't think they looked cool. Um, but I do think that after seeing what they, the vision for this is completely changed my outlook on what the project can become um, and how you can interact with it. Uh, so super excited for that. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Creature World sitting at 1.7 uh, floor. I know that we've had a lot of you know eyes on Danny Cole and what he's doing. I'm expecting more announcements around this. Um, big shout out to the Ravens players that picked all of these up. I know uh, we had a few of the Ravens players uh, picking these up over the last few days. Really cool to see NFL, NBA players um, participating in a lot of these projects. I will say Creature World seems to be one that all agree on. It does seem like it's cheap enough. Um, with nice aesthetic, people can like it for the art. Plus, Danny Cole is just a dope dude. So, uh, really excited for this project and the holders um, for what the future has in store. Dead Fella is currently sitting at 0 0.8 E floor. Um, this is a really, really uh, connected community and one of those communities that I do think, um, you know, when we look at like Robotos, what their announcement, what they're doing. Uh, Dead fellas, um, dead heads, uh, the Moris, um, projects like those really start to like those communities are just so connected. You cannot buy that. Um, it's something that's built over time. Um, those are things that I want to be a part of. So this is one that's also on my radar checking out. I know they had a recent drop. Um, they had, you know, the, the holders and the discord are really great. Everybody I've talked to in the community has been great and helpful to me, um, and learning more about it. 
Uh, so excited for what's in store going forward there. Mutant Ape Yacht Club currently sitting at 6.58. Um, you know, we had that run up right in the beginning of uh, November. And, you know, that run up pushed us all the way to like a, an 80 floor. Um, and since then, we've kind of trailed down. I don't think that we'll see the floor dive all the way back down to three. Um, I think we'll stick around this average price of, you know, 80 with a floor of like six to 6.5 for quite a while here. Um, there are a lot of expectations currently going into the quarter, you know, quarter one of next year uh, with the Board Ape Yacht Club token. Obviously, mutants will be a receiver of this. Um, and a lot of people are also uh, holding out for what, you know, the game uh, gamification for what Board Ape Yacht Club is going to become. So, you know, play to earn a token, um, rewards, upcoming drops. Uh, all these little things, I think, are what are going to be uh, kind of like a supporting uh, foundation for the floor and keeping it from kind of like downturning. Uh, and I think if we do see this price start to pull out, pull pull down, um, we'll see a lot of people start to dive back in that have been on the sidelines, uh, you know, wanting to enter the ecosystem for Board API Club. Doodles, another project that I saw in Miami, got to experience in person. Um, this is a project that the lower it drops, the more ambitious uh, I will be on adding another um, two or three to my collection. I do think I see the vision. I think it's a long-term build out just like all these other projects we talked about, um, but it's a blue chip in my in my mind. Um, the merch looks amazing that they've done. The collaborations I think they can do look great. Um, I, I'm very bullish on this project for those reasons. Um Again, a lot of this is gut driven. Like I can just feel and see where the project's headed and what opportunities lie ahead of it. Um, and this is one of those that I, I think has just kind of navigated some choppy waters. They have a great team. Um, it's small but growing fast, and they're not adding just anybody. They're adding uh, the right people with the right backgrounds. Um, so super excited for that. Uh, a project that I wanted to touch on. We'll see if the floors adjusted it all here. Um, wavelength by Caleb Johnston is a project that for some reason, uh, well, I can explain why it's because I've been doing so much other crap in the meantime, um, is a project that's eluded me in some, some way. Um, and you know, I, I think if you bought down here, like 0.5 to, to one, you're doing really well. Right. Um, but it is a project that seems to, uh, really resemble Fidenza's. And for that reason, I think a lot of people are going to always look at this and say, hey, like, that's that's interesting. I want to own it. Um, I think I mentioned that Koopa Troopa has bought a ton of them. I've seen him selling a bunch. Um, and, you know, I, I've seen others picking them up like Andy Milanakis here. Um, it does seem like a cool project. Uh, you know, it'll be interesting. I don't know much about who Caleb is. I'm probably going to end this video and do some research on who he is and what he's up to um, and what his past portfolio looks like for, for art that he's created. Um, but I think it does really resemble Vendenza's quite closely. Um, and I'm interested to know what people think if this is, you know, too much of a clone um, or if this is really a great spark of, you know, art that is, like he says, uh, a, a inspired by the neural pathways within the brain um, and, and kind of like the burst of, you know, light and color that would come from that. Um, I'm certainly thinking about buying, do your research, let me know what you think below. Um, and I'm, I'm very interested for that project for sure. Um, Ape Kids Club, one of the like leading ape derivatives uh, that we've seen come out. Um, currently in the top, you know, 20, 30, uh, on open sea has a floor of about one ETH activity has heated up over the last couple days. Um, the volume and price rising, um, definitely keep your eye on this project. Wanted to bring it to everybody's attention. Um, but it really looks great. And, uh, yeah, I think this is one of those that's just really, uh, hit the, hit the like market well. Um, they've avoided a lot of FUD. They've come out with something that looks clean. Um, and, and yeah, I'm really excited to see what happens here. Um, also wanted to note sandbox activity, because this is a discussion that's come out a lot about sand prices and, and what sandbox, I think with the alpha version coming out and public access coming out in the near future, 
Um, we're going to see a lot of increased buying. We're going to see increased prices, uh, increased narrative around Sandbox. So definitely keep your eyes here, um, especially since we know Board Ape Yacht Club, Adidas, uh, and others are have a, a heavy focus here. Um, I can also say that I've consulted with a lot of companies over the last couple of months, and all of their eyes are also on Sandbox for where they're making their metaverse play, at least in the near term. Um, so keep your eyes there. The floor for Board Ape Yacht Club currently sitting at 51 ETH. Um, Activity-wise, this is, you know, it's kind of that same thing. We saw the November peak uh, for Mutants and a lot of other projects. We're currently on a steady here. Um, but I do think that what we'll see is uh, a start for a lot of these, you know, companies and individuals that are getting in. A lot of the money is still going to keep flowing back into these, uh, you know, heavy, heavy blue chips like Punks and Board Ape Yacht Club. Um, so I don't have any worry here for this slowing down. Um, I do think this is kind of solidified itself, like I've said. Um, but as we mentioned in the beginning of the video, and I'm sorry for making this so long, um, is that Board Ape Yacht Club has stuck around this like 51 to 53 ETH floor uh, for the past week or so. And we've seen the floor for punks uh, at one point all the way down to 63. So within, you know, give or take 10 to 13 ETH uh, window, between the two projects. And so when we look at like this whole flipping narrative that, that comes out um, and Depeche node, uh, Depeche node from uh, Future Proof has, has made a note of this in his newsletter, which if you haven't signed up for, check out the Twitter page for Future Proof and sign up. Um, but this whole flipping idea of projects and you know ETH and Bitcoin um, is super interesting where we see a lot of, you know, I think emotions start to stir when that, that narrative comes up. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how punks play out here uh, going forward. There, there has been a decline um, with, you know, some rises here and there um, since we hit that floor of like 140 ETH earlier in the year. Um, and I would say that what we're currently seeing is a little bit of a cycle out of punks. People uh, seeing lots of other things happen. Um, we're also seeing all this excitement in other projects uh, with more opportunity. And I think there's a financial decision that's being made for a lot of these holders where, um, you know, they've held to 140, they've held to 180, um, we've seen it go to 60, and we're seeing supply of listed uh, start to creep up a little bit. Um, but I will say that a lot of the really good looking punks, um, if they're being listed, are quickly being snatched up. Um, we're also seeing ones that look, you know, very clean. Uh, we're still requiring a, a heavy premium to, to purchase. Um, so, you know, if we look here, uh, the first couple that I really would like, you know, not snap by, but I'll be like, huh, let me look at this a little bit more. Certainly this albino with the mole, um, this one with the beard, you know, it, it's going to require, um, you know, a 10 to 20 ETH or at least a 20 ETH. Uh, premium above the floor to get something that looks, in my opinion, pretty clean. Um, so definitely keep your eyes out there. Over the last few days um, and hours, we've seen certainly some interesting punks go for sale. Um, we've had some 3Ds, uh, 3D of a pipe go for sale yesterday, um, but a hoodie go for sale. Um, there, there certainly is still volume here. But I will say that I don't see the same narrative that I saw earlier in the year, which was punks are super undervalued. They're the future. Um, you need to own a punk. It's more of a, hey, I've got one. I'm an OG. I'm established. Um, will be very interesting to see how this plays out. I think if you look at punks as a leverage play on ETH going up um, and punks also going up, uh, it will be super interesting, right? Because I think what will ultimately see is the price of ETH go up, uh, but will punks go with it the same rate? Uh, will it sustain it? Will it kind of hold steady? Um, you know, what, what will the floor look like as this all happens? I can't tell you. I don't have a crystal ball, um, but certainly punk selling over the last few days uh, has been interesting. There's been a narrative of, you know, what's the future look like from them? Uh, what's Larva Lab's stance on the IP? What are they going to do for them? Uh, are they building something? All of these are, are valid questions. Um, so there's certainly going to be some volatility there uh, and definitely check it out. 
Um, on the topic of volatility, we'll quickly look uh, real quick at this chart that I pulled up on uh, Ethereum. Uh, we did see in the last couple you know hours here a spike up from like the 4200s all the way back up into the 4400s. Um, so a nice five percent pump this morning. Um, you know, I think I think I took a little bit off the table uh, after the big dip. Um, we got a slight bit of a rebound here, and I always encourage I think people to to understand that you know if you have taxes, take take portion of your portfolio off the table to pay those taxes. Um, make sure you're not leaving this all to the end of the year. I've taken a little bit off the table just so that I can uh, reassuredly um, handle that. Uh, but I do think that we're currently in a, sta a state right now where we'll start to see some recovery here. Um, I think if we start to break out and start heading up, um, it's very, very possible that we see this breakout to new all-time highs. Uh, but I think this kind of support line here, um, this dividing line here for you know below and up, uh, upper trends will be the one to watch. Um, I won't get into any kind of trading analysis because I think this is pretty rudimentary. Um, but definitely keep your eye on the charts, on the charts, and uh, what the kind of narrative within the, I guess, trading, political, um, and financial uh, sectors is like. Because, um, like we mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's a lot of dynamics that are all playing playing into this. Um, and what we will see is when, you know, somebody makes a large sell off here, uh, it doesn't have to be influenced by one, one event. Um, it's simply the cascade of a lot of people being leveraged up, uh, due to a lot of rise in, in the market. Um, and those leverage positions being called, um, and then it's this cascade and then you have, uh, stop losses being triggered and, uh, it really kind of snowballs on itself until so you have this 10 to 15% sell-off. Um, and then everybody's at the bottom, essentially just buying it and, uh, you know, making making money off of the, the cascade and eventually it kind of rebounds and we go up. Um, so definitely keep your eyes there. Uh, the volatility is certainly not over. Um, there's lots to come. But thank you so much for watching. If you have questions, comments, leave them below. Uh, we're going to start bringing back the Morning Mint um, now that we have a new laptop, new system, um, and we're going to start rolling out some more information. So please, if you haven't, subscribe um, and go check out Future Proof. Uh, we'll be providing more information there uh, through written articles and newsletters, and we'll catch you tomorrow morning. Peace.